hey, we're uh, going to be continuing today working on the right hand to match this old left-hander, this old gauntlet. Now we're going to continue punching the holes on this fella here. I did manage to find my good punch yesterday, which is good. So this is my spare. Also put some hot water down because we're probably doing some sanding a little bit later. But right at the moment, I think I'm going to continue prepping this. So there's a line of stitching I need to do across. So this is the lozenge here. This part here is this part here. And this line of stitches that runs down the middle is actually what attaches this whole knuckle plate into the soft leather underneath, which keeps it, sorry, get my hand out of the way there, keeps it riding true over the knuckle. So that's the plan. Okay. Right about the two inch mark by the looks of it. Okay, do, 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 do. All right, we're going to. Okay, I don't want to put a pen mark or anything on here if I can help it. So I'm just going to do it this way. And this guy here, which is our the wheelie version. Of uh, for setting our thread spacing. this because this poor old black one is really getting beat up. These I can, the puck board, butcher block, whatever you want to call it, is a little easier for me to acquire. I punch these holes through and then I'll transfer the holes. using my hand all. Again, I've used a little bit of beeswax on the tip of the hammer punch. Let's make sure we got the right side. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here just to make sure there's a little all work in the areas. So I'm just gonna try to make sure my holes are lining up. Yeah. 
right. Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna see how this one actually. There you are. Old coffee cups never die, they just end up becoming holders for different tools. I encourage you to remember to hit that like button and if you want to keep up on content when it does come out and is available, just hit that subscribe button if you're on the YouTubes. This is my primary source for my material. Probably, what I'm going to do is I'll end up, once I have all this punched, I'm going to use a warm water bath, sand this all so that it's relatively pliable, dry it a bit, just using a hand towel, suck up the extra moisture, and then I will proceed with the first round of stitching. And I'll be doing the stitching and shaping all at the same time. So let's put that away. All right, so these two are done. Now what I'm going to do is take a look at this again. So I've got stitching that goes pretty much from here all the way around to the bottom of this side here. Okay. And then on this, the thumb Looks like from about there, and again all the way around to the base. That's, uh, ooh, and I should cut these slots too. I have darts, I forgot to put these darts in. So, let's grab our paper pattern here. Let's get this done. Oh, no, they're there. <laughs> I just forgot to cut them out. Again, I'm just putting a small hole right at the point of the dart just to give me a point to start from. And it's prevents me from overcutting it. It also prevents it from Reading that pucker point. So again, just probably 
stream of consciousness as I'm working my way along here. I just hope you can see what I'm doing relatively well. Again, it's part of the process of just trying to figure this whole thing out. All right, so for this, down to here. That's good. Okay. down that side. All the way to the base, that's right. And now that will basically line this up as well, so I'm just gonna Mark a starting point. And even though I haven't yet cut the bell for this, I am going to mark that as well. Punch it all out. All right. to keep my tools from being too big a mess. Excuse me. So yesterday it was sunny out, today not so much, and it's a little bit cooler. Like I said, if you're interested in when I get this pattern done, and I'm happy with it, I'll be gladly offering it up to those interested. And because it's the only thing I'm doing now, and unless you actually catch me at an event with extra leather bits about, um, I'm not actually doing the leather. Anymore, not as commissions or anything. Um, but I am offering the patterns up to those people who want them. Uh, they're $20, $25 a pop. Um, either I can mail them or I can. I mean, looking at getting them digitized so that I can send them out. If you're interested in that, let me know. And that will be the same for any of my patterns, actually. Now, I would prefer that, you know, somebody doesn't buy them up and then put their name on them and try to sell them as their own. One of the reasons I pretty much got out of making metal armor, outside of the health reasons, I mean, that was 
one thing, but there's always that passion and over pain thing. You you love doing something enough, you you do it no matter how much it hurts. But what gutted me was doing it finger gauntlets and steel equipment and the sweat and toil I put into it and then the next thing you know somebody points out that they found one of my helmets or what they thought was one of my helmets on the internet for like 200 bucks same with my gauntlets like 150 or something it turns out they were being produced overseas by some sweatshop somewhere for a fraction of what I could actually do them for here. And the quality was absolute crap. But, but again, it's like some poor person, you know, somebody spends their shekels and ends up Acquiring a piece of crap that really isn't even fit to sit on their shelf, let alone be worn. So now there is some good stuff out there. I have some very, very good friends in the Ukraine and Eastern Europe who produce amazing stuff. And all the power to them. But they don't do it by stealing other people's ideas and IP. So. so, I guess what I'm saying is, if you end up doing say, something like ordering the pattern off of me or getting make sure you give credit where credit is due don't claim it as your own I, especially those people out in the SCA I love getting you in a kit so and those that just simply want to learn how to make the stuff that's cool too Rise in my thumb is starting to drive me crazy. We're almost there. Loose on the, this part of it. So what I'm going to do when if I know that this pattern is right and I can get it done and be satisfied with it, I'll then take it, reproduce it, and have everything on it, including where to put your your holes so that you can literally transfer it straight over onto your leather when you're working on it. Okay, just the cuff on this. Same over there. Still got a ways to go. Alright. Oops, don't do that. This black piece that I've got here, I love this thing, right? But I've had it for so long, I'm kind of afraid I'm just gonna punch through it. Eh, what the heck. Dates all the way back to Tandy in Calgary, back when it used to be downtown. Cam was the manager back then. All right, hands are shaking, so we gotta give them a short break. So where is? Oh, there it is. We're gonna be needing that eventually. So, and I'm going to go off camera for a minute because the toweling I need is over on the other side. So, I'll be right back.
rustling around behind you here. Okay. All right. So a bit of toweling afterwards. So this will be part two. Now I can't get it all done in one another session. So this will be part two. And then part three we'll do either tomorrow or on Monday. Let's see how it goes. Getting old sucks. <laughs> One of the things I do when I'm punching a lot of holes is I'll set up, I have a punch like this that I set up in the drill press and instead of manually handling every single punch, I just simply turn on the drill press, it spins and just punch the holes using it that way. Um, two things that it's really really quick. I think I'm probably as quick with my hands here as, as the drill press is, but it saves wear and tear like on the hands. As you can see, my hands are shaking a little bit. They're pretty swollen today after yesterday. One of the things that I stopped producing a lot of leather product way back was the pain in the hands just got to the point where I absolutely dreaded coming down into the studio and working with them. And that's just no good. So now it's, you know, I go and I... I work when I feel when I feel that I can. I have the the desire to overcome the or to deal with the pain. And then the other thing is, is since the coming of all the video and stuff, I've just really enjoyed sharing what I've discovered along on my own journey with all of this with others. And to try to encourage them to give it a shot. Enjoy it. I mean, I got lucky. I mean, not as lucky as some, but I mean, I got to work building props and discovering a lot of this stuff on the fly because there was nobody else around who was doing it. So few more of these holes out. I mean, today, there's just so much of it out there that you can draw on. Mm. Right. Oh, 
comes to this one, I'm getting this to, so it looks like it goes all the way around. Okay. Go again with the our device here for marking where we want our holes. So if we can get to 200 subscriptions and hit a couple of, do a couple of live feeds set up and get the restrictions lifted off of us, and I understand why those restrictions are there, it makes sense. Then I'll be able to do more of these as lives and be able to answer questions or hold conversations on how-tos or thought processes with people who are, who are out there and want to know. Now the leather, sock leather that this is all going to be attached to, I'm probably going to end up using either a, probably a, a light deer hide. So basically what you would use your, for your gloves. I've got some cow hide, I think it might be light enough. I'll have to check a look. Um, it's something robust enough that it's not going to tear if it gets moist. Because you're going to sweat a lot in these. Again, this is another reason why I prefer to use the, the wool felt as opposed to just going with the, the cold cell foam or something. Um, because it actually will help in the long run with keeping your, your leather alive. Because... That and you know, taking care of it, drying it out, using your saddle soaps, and that to keep it clean, just like you would with a, any kind of harness. If you're using, if anybody out there is around horses a lot, can know how toxic sweat can be, and how hard it is on leather. Two inches to go on this. Okay. Alrighty then. thing about using the scissors I do, the shears, is they don't leave a lot of unevenness when it comes to the 
the cuts I make so I can I'm just taking off a few of the little tabs and bits, but not doesn't look too bad. So once I get these done a little bit more, I'm gonna bevel the ends, bevel the edges. Side of this, so I don't lose track of my top. Right, so I'm going to start. I'm going to stitch this puppy first. set up here. Not a lot of water forming on it. Enough that uh, it'll help us doing what we want to do with it. Get a beat up towel here. It's in a lot of use. So I use warm water just because it helps a little bit. Open my fingers. I think the soaking knife in. Doesn't take a lot. Come on. There we go. Just have to go off to the side. I'm not pushing this down into a mold or anything, so I just want the leather to be wet enough, sammed enough, samming, wetting, um, so that the fibers want to move. I can actually hear the leather bubbling, which is kind of neat. One of the nice things about using hot water, too, is the hot water will heat the leather, the leather will expand, and so doing, in theory, pull more water into the spaces. Pretty good. Do this like one piece at a time here. Mm, excuse me. Cold. Chilly, chilly. <sighs> stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to find the end of it. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. Where did you go? There you are. <laughs> Not as blind as I thought I was. Solid, that should be waxed. My trash bin here, okay. I 
know, with my stitching, I try to hide my stitches as much as I can. So, um, don't use a lot of knots or dead ends if you can help it. So, I'm going to start out in the end, go inbound, then I'll come back. So, leave enough of this lace. The string so that I can bury it and stitch. Oops. And this is usually where you hear me go wah, 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 a lot. <laughs> I hate getting tangled up in my own string. So. Right number of holes, everything will be good. Don't film the top of my head while I'm trying to do this. And you can see how wet this is right at the moment. It's continuing to soak into the fibers. So I'm just playing with the edge a little bit as I go. I'm just going to use a simple. double pass here. Just gonna check on something. My stitching is gonna be a little bit tighter than it was on this original. Okay. Um, he was using like almost three eighths of an inch as far as his spacing was concerned. I'm considerably tighter. Oops, see what I mean? Just going to bury this back under. Now, if this doesn't seem tight enough, what I'll end up having to do is take my stitches off, cut my stitches off, and I'll tighten it up again. But, we'll see. Funny how quiet it is in here today. This feels strange. Actually, that's not looking too bad. Too 
to guess pretty close on that. All right, let's bury this one. The idea with this, of course, is that the friction of the thread itself against the leather will hold the, the stitching in place so it doesn't unravel. left there to do the next one. So we'll toss that off to the side. I told myself I was going to bring a timer downstairs. So I'm going to try to keep this under under an hour again. Do, 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 do. Yesterday's video I think was about 45 minutes all told. The big one is this is be patient. Don't try to rush your work. In the end you'll be happier. Take the time to get it right. Oh yeah. Got a little ahead of myself there. Now I've got a couple of things I can just, while this is drying out, I'm gonna drape it over so that it forms a little easier, takes the shape I want. Now one of the things that happens when you sand leather um, is you actually do force some of the oils that were in there, that they put in, out. So in essence what happens is as it dries it becomes harder than it may have been when it started out, which is exactly what you want. This leather is, that I'm using is about I think this is about 10 ounce, which is pretty much as light as I want to get unreinforced for something like hand production. Now, I'm going to, once I get this dyed and dried out, I'll, I will be giving it a wax coating and a bit of a hardening process with that and what that will do it'll add to the hardness but it also will protect the leather from moisture even further at least for a while I mean one of the things with as you can see with this older piece is that it has over the over time it has softened but what's the beauty of it though is that it's still hard where it really needs to be hard um, as it, over the back of the hand these very vulnerable fingertips right that's all good the core of the thumb is still nice and pretty rigid giving some protection but the beauty of leather is that it softens up where it can kind of needs to be easier to flex and move, which is an advantage that it gives us. So steel won't do this. Steel either fits or it does not. Then there's plastic. 
for practice, I think plastic is fine. Yeah, you can hear that in my voice. I'm just not a fan. One of the problems with plastic, of course, is that for me anyway, it doesn't sweat. It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, it's not the sweat. It doesn't. Uh, doesn't. I. I think personally, I think it forces the heat back into the body. So things like you know the hands may not, the extremities maybe not so serious, but. I really worry about it over core areas on the body as far as overheating is concerned. I think if we don't think enough of that, and the amount of damage we can do to ourselves in an overheat situation. I think we all think we're supermen. Uh, fact of the matter is, we are not. We're just as susceptible to things like that as anybody else. And even more so because I think too many of us are just weekend warriors. It's a little, putting the hole a little too close to the edge, I think. Oh well. Oh dear. Yep, I did. Booger. Booger. Right. I'm gonna fix that right now. Doo -doo -doo. It's not something I like to do too often. Spring. Make a little bit of a boo boo here to fix it. To you gotta remind yourself from time to time. Thread can cut. <laughs> it can be abrasive and it can saw its way through the leather if you're pulling on it too hard. And so if you're too close to the end, and in this case it's sammed so the leather fibers are weakened, so what can happen is it'll just saw its way through and You'll lose your hole. So that's what happened there. So this is just about it for this process. get through two of these videos without dropping a single f-bomb I am going to be so happy as I have <laughs> nice okay that's pulled it down approximately where we want now the problem is it's still wet enough that it's moving and there's a bit of bounce back. The thing with salmon is that right now it's very supple, but as it dries, it's really kind of neat because then the leather will take on this near plastic state, like in clay or plaster scene where you, you can move it to a place and it just stays there, right? It just, it's not there yet with this one, but it's going to be.
At that point, too, you can also stretch the leather to a pro to into shapes, and it'll thin out and it'll hold that shape. All right, now I think I have to remember where those forms are, so I'm just gonna. Actually, I can probably, yeah. I think it's over there in that box, so I'll be off screen for a minute. I'll be right back. And the camera, what I'm looking for is a, there it is. Gonna do is I'm just going to take this ball. It's a basically this would be something that would go on the end of a, like a, a banister or something or whatever. That's all it was. I take that, put that on there like so. Press that over there for the moment. Now I think. I'm just trying to decide if I want to attach this right now. No, I think that'll go after. We'll do this one first. All right, same trick. Is our water still warmish? I just use warm tap water. Don't boil it or anything. It just needs to be warmer. See the bubbling happening? I don't know if you guys can see it from there. You can certainly hear it. I, do, I know the microphone on there won't be able to hear it, but anyway, you can see the bubbling actually coming out of the leather as the air is moved out. Okay, throw that in. Move that right there out of the way. And you can see I'm not spending a lot of time soaking it. Oh, that's right there, I think, to start. Check my coffee for spiders. I think everybody does this, you know, everybody's a little bit different when it comes to to this. Oh, thing. There we go. I hear the rain coming down outside. Yeah, that looks all right. All right. Let's start with the side ones. close to my body so that you guys I actually have a chance to see what I'm doing. I get a feel for this. Again, this gives you kind of a really good time sense. Just how long this project like this might take. I might have guessed wrong on my thread count. Usually you need about three times the distance. I am not satisfied that that's going to work. So I am going to pull that. Now, 
when I did the copy the pattern here off of this onto the tin foil, um, something to it's one way of basically creating the pattern off the master or off to this um, without just without damaging this uh, it gives us a good approximation not exact but it gives us a good approximation um, close enough for what we need to do here the other way of course is to take all the stitching out and put it all out into the flat again or as close to it as you can and recreate the pattern that way I really wanted to avoid that um, just because I did not want to take this piece apart um, there's a history with this piece um, oh, in, in SCA circles we like to call it the juju uh, I guess the special sauce or whatever you want to call it with it so I did not want to pull this one apart so uh, that's why I went with the tinfoil technique recreating the pattern which works relatively well even on a complex pattern you just got to remember to go over it afterwards once you get it onto your paper go over it a few times just to fine-tune it don't take it as exact and when you make your first paper pattern with it Take it, measure it, measure it up again. You know, take out your tailor tape. And by tailor's tape, that's uh, just in case one of these guys, right? So, and you know, make sure that your measurements, you know, double check your, all of your measurements, just to be sure, you know, take it up against your pattern, right? Take a look, you know, make sure that you've got those numbers pretty damn close to what you want, right? So, you know, either cutting leather, leather's expensive, right? You know, you start cutting up the leather and then you find out that, oh crap, I blew it. Better have to cut paper, right? Or tinfoil for that matter, to get your shape right, as opposed to, you know, totally and completely ruin a piece of leather. Now, that being said, it happens, right? Um, and if you find the project isn't working, you know, if the pattern isn't right, you've cut the leather out, and you're sitting there and you realize this isn't gonna work, don't try to make it work. Sometimes the best thing to do is, if, is simply just take the piece, put it aside, cut out a new piece. You know, don't sweat it. I mean, I, I have the same philosophy whether I'm working in leather, steel, or, or any of the prop materials I use, right? If, it, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. Same thing, you know, if you're doing a scroll or something, you know, and calligraphy and illumination and, oh my God, it's not working. Well, sometimes it's better to restart and try to fix what was. I've often had pieces come into my studio, um, to the shop, where the owner basically has ordered something online and they brought it in and it's like, can, can you fix this? And I take a look at it and go, yes, I can. And they leave and I build them a whole new piece <laughs> because the only way to fix it is make a new one. Now, granted, that works as long as you have the skill skill set that you can do that and the time that's another big one sometimes you just take a look you shake your head and you go oh, i'm sorry it's not a lot i can do to help so as you can see i mean we did a how far we got yesterday in an hour and today we're going to see about how far we can get in an hour and that gives you an idea of just you know in real time how quickly this stuff can be done or not.
Now I'm using upholstery needles, which I can pick up up your regular, usually at your regular sewing craft store. Also pick them up at the leather supply now. And the, the beauty of these, of course, is they're dull. Right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna be bleeding all over the product. I mean, I usually find an opportunity to do that anyway, but. And most dyes will cover blood, <laughs> depending on where you put it, I guess, how it goes. Dried blood is brown, usually. Unless you got something really weird in your chemistry, but anyway. Um, so brown dyes, black dyes, pretty much will cover it. Red, red will do it. Yellow, not so much. I like to think of it as antiquing. Give me a second, I'm going to turn that down. So I'm not trying to talk over it. that in a minute. Now I'm doing this all in front of the camera here and in the studio. You don't have to do that. I mean, a lot of my leather work, stitching and that, I'll end up just doing in front of the television set. Watching something or maybe listening to music or something. And normally I have music on in the background here, drums or something, but YouTube absolutely despises the whole idea and slaps copyright on everything, which I understand. Except, of course, when it's mine, I have to send in letters and go, Hi, that was me drumming, and that was my music, and I set it up, and I did it. So, but, hey. All right. Now this is going to take some forming. I can see that. Oh, looks like we're going to get the... Oh, we've got some FedEx coming by. No, not today. I think he's lost because... I haven't got anything I'm waiting for, and I know that my neighbors have moved out, so there's nobody down there expecting it either. So. And my road is a dead end. Bah! <laughs> goal today before I shut the video off is to have all of these pieces stitched up. That's a pretty good idea. Of where how we're at with this. Uh oh. Oh, we're all there. And the needle drops. And the needle drops.
Now ideally I would have a second camera on here so that later when I edit this I can just bounce back and forth between the angles so you can see what, what I'm doing from this particular spot. But hey, that's the future. Right now you just have to squint at the screen and try to figure out what the old man's doing. And really all I'm doing is stitching up the dirt, bringing it together. And again, this will help with the shaping. I could make bigger darts, I think. Making a metal note of that for myself for later. I think on these prototypes, it'll be fine. It was, somebody warned me, they even said that uh, you got to be careful what you hum. <laughs> okay, that looks like the fingertips are done. Now, again, if you feel there's not enough coverage, right, or the thickness isn't where you want it to be, you can always layer up. I mean, that's the one thing we're doing with the back here is we're putting an extra piece over top, so we're actually doubling the thickness. So once it's hardened and everything else, there's this extra bit. The thing is, you can do that anywhere, right? Doubling up, you know, say over your finger riders, you know, or even over the back or I'll probably, I might even put something a little extra. There was originally something extra over the thumb guard here. I can actually see where there was another triangle. I don't know if it was leather or steel or something. There was, there was an extra bit over the thumb. So, I mean, you can do that. You could put a steel plate there. You put another piece of leather there, something decorative. Same with over the back. You can always add to it, right? If you're nervous about whether or not there's enough protection there. Thing you gotta remember is uh, by adding layers of complexity, right, are you adding weight to it? Are you making it less flexible in the long run? You know, how is it going to affect the piece when you're done? Now I'm cutting these off with fairly long tags on the end. Um, I'll probably nip those all off after. Okay, so that one is there. Now I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stitch that back piece on. The other beauty of this again is I can take this now and start to give it some shape. Now some people don't sam at all, they'll just do it with the wax. Um, that's a, that's a viable technique. I stopped doing that a long time ago. I much prefer and find I get much better results with the water. I'm getting our shape the way we want it. So that's coming out, starting to get there. All right, you can see the shape that it's starting to come into, which is where we want it on the end of the hand. So that's roughly like so. So I'm going to put you here. I'll set you here on there. And then I'm going to, I think I'm going to do the thumb first and get that piece together. 
And then the last thing I'll do is I'll stitch this back plate onto here. So put those guys like so. Bring you back up here. Now really, this is the piece I need to form right now. And I need to stitch this into here. And looking at this piece, there's not a lot of forming actually with the back. It's pretty flat. So I'm not going to worry too much about it, but this I am. So, side again. Add a little more hot water. So one thing I've always regretted, I don't actually have running water down here in the studio. The problem being, of course, is I am below my septic field down here in this part of the house. And until they actually get sewers running this way, I'm afraid that's the way it's going to stay. The only other way I could do it is actually have a pump down here that would actually pump the water up. But <clears throat> there's stuff too. Um, there's stuff I put down. I would mm, Somebody would be tempted to put down the drains here. That probably would not be good for the septics. Um, as it is, everything I use here, the thinners and that, all end up going to the chemical dump. And I pay to have it removed. Okay, again. Preamble. Actually, my favorite part is actually shaping hands. I love shaping hands. It's just so exciting. So. <laughs> uh, nope, I am going to save that. I don't think it's long enough to finish the job. But I think you can see how this is starting to come together now. Each thing is a stage or a step. So, doing it in order, figuring out how the composition is going to be at the end. I used to have a little device for putting my thread in. <laughs> Uh, it broke that long ago. But fortunately, the nice thing about tap the, uh, the upholstery needles, tapestry needles, whatever you want to call them, um, is that <laughs> they have big eyes. <laughs> big wide eyes. So they make it easy for someone with bad eyes and shaky hands. to attach everything. Sorry, hit the holes. So the primary forming on the hand, this part of the hand actually, is, is in the thumb. So covering your knuckle area here, making sure you get that enough room for the for it to be manipulated when it's moving back and forth. Thumb is always tricky. It's the trickiest part of hand protection. Because without it, you cannot really manipulate anything. Which means it's usually exposed in some way and very vulnerable. But that being said, it's also why it's my favorite because it looks so cool when they're done. And it doesn't matter if it's steel or leather or even plastic for that matter, it just looks cool. And I try to get the, when I put, bury the thread, I try to get it under as many of the stitches as I put in as possible. And if the needle gets sticky, which it does, sometimes I'll just you take a little sort of blunt nose pliers or needle nose pliers and I'll pull it off. Okay, that's 
one. Sucking it in. Oops. <laughs> Supposed to bury the stitch, not let it escape. <laughs> I'm starting to feel this in my back today. So, when we're doing dyeing and stuff, I think, do for the dyeing video, I'm probably going to sit in a chair. <laughs> and I've got these wonderful old salon chair, uh, beautician salon chairs in the shop there uh, for barber. Actually, barber shop, kind of. No, ladies hairdressing. There we are. Hairdressers, sorry. Boy, ha. Uh, Male privilege, or whatever, until I'm old. Okay, that was one. And the second one, just to make sure it's not escaping us. And what I'm talking about is I just grab my pliers so never pushing on the end because you don't want to because this is your weakest point on the on the needle is the eye I'm just gonna grab the needle through okay, there we go okay that's too short for the last one So yeah, I'm getting a lot of shots at the top of my head, I'm sure, right now, because I'm craned over, which is probably why my back is starting to hurt, because I'm hunched like this right now. So, as soon as I get this thread in, I'm do a little fighter drill. It's not much of a drill, it's just a posturing thing. So, what I'm going to do is elbows back it, and I'm just going to push my elbows, my shoulders back, set. Elbows at 90. Ah, oh, there. Nice clunk. <clears throat> I can hear things going click and snap back there. It was funny, yesterday I was watching the video as I was loading it and because I was just wearing the shirtless, uh, sleeveless shirt yesterday, I was reminded of just how badly damaged my, uh, my right arm is, um, right shoulder, <laughs> all of it, so, to the point where I decided, no, I'm going to cover that up today, nobody needs to look at that, so, oops, see, <laughs> this is what I got <laughs> Didn't do it. I didn't say it. You all thought it. Now I go a little snug when I'm Maybe even a little over snug a bit when I'm working with wet leather because one of the things too, when you add water to the leather, it will expand a bit. It will actually sort of go ah, like a sponge, right? But when it dries, it will shrink. 
And so if your stitches are too loose, what'll happen is of course they'll go really loose and you want to avoid that. Also, leather, you never know exactly how long it's been lying around a warehouse. In many ways, it, in many, many cases, it could have been decades um, before it actually sees the light of day again. And uh, that's, you know, a lot of people, what? What are you talking about? Um, it doesn't rot unless it gets soaking wet and is left that way. And even then, it can last for years and years and years. Um, I've got old saddles here, which uh, are almost a century old. Um, the leather is crap. They're shot. I only kept the, well, sh I wouldn't put them on a horse, okay? Um, or trust them to ride on. But I kept them around because I needed the, I wanted the, the wood framing and everything underneath it for actually building medieval saddles or medieval-esque saddles um, for people. And I needed something to model on. But the leather itself is remarkable in that, yeah, it's still holding its shape even though it's pretty fatigued. Now, what I'm doing here is, again, you see on my thumb, there's this point here. And this point here I worry about these and on this you can see it um, you can see actually that there is this has been worked right in this area so that it gives room to this part of my thumb knuckle that actually did on my right it's easier to see it on this all right so that when I slip my hand in here all right it actually gives me space right in that spot so that knuckle can do its job and the same over here, there's enough of a length and then the indentation. I can actually, you can see I'm moving it, but it's not pushing down on it, okay? And so, and then this mimics my wrist. So what I've got to do here now is once I get this part, this little puppy over here stitched on, which is next, is then I'm going to start playing with this to get it right. Start near wrist first and then back. Butting this up against. There we go. And we'll do a double back. We got somebody here. I just heard something. Might be somebody hanging up top. Of course, I don't have the sign up outside that I'm shooting video, so I gotta keep my eyes on both doors. Again, burying my stitches, and I'll double it. Oops, there we go. Not under the thumbnail, that could hurt. There we go. Tight, done. Off, alrighty. 
looks like it's going to be big enough. Cool. All right. So I'm just going to do a little bit of preforming here. I do have smaller little wooden balls, I guess you call them, for shaping, spoons and the like. But you can see now how that's already starting to take shape. And what I'll do now, of course, is as this begins to dry out, I'll start just folding this over a bit. There we go. So anyway, you can see how that's starting to come together. Let's just let that sit here, like so. And then the last thing we're gonna do is throw this on. Hopefully we got it right. You know, I'm gonna let this dry a bit before I do that, actually. Give it some stiffness. And then I'll be able to soak that a bit. And what I might actually do is pre-dye this. Gonna have to let it dry a bit before I can do that. So I think in all likelihood this is pretty much as far as I'm going to go today with this exercise. But so far so good. I'm pretty satisfied with this. It looks like we got the pattern pretty much right. So I'm just going to put that there like so and let them dry. We'll go back at it again tomorrow. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get that part. We'll get this part pre-dyed, this on. May even, if this is dry enough, dye that as well. Get it all shaped. And then what I'm going to look at doing is dyeing the whole thing, actually. We'll get the whole thing dyed, finished up that way. Get the bell cut. We'll do that tomorrow. And get the bell stitched on, which would be great. And then, well, actually, we won't stitch the bell on first. What we're going to end up doing is we'll get the bell shaped in that, but I want to get, I want to get all the soft leather, I want to get all that done, cut out, so that it's ready to go for, for assembly. And I think that might be actually easier to do, well, maybe not, actually. Maybe able to do that with the bell on. So, we'll see you about that tomorrow, I guess. So anyway, that's it for today. Cheers, everyone.